This is January 2006 and it's question one. To convey the meaning of any physical quantity, two aspects must be stated. What are these? And so the first one we would have said, define a physical quantity that it has size and it is measurable. What they're actually looking for is size, um, but they're looking for that it has a unit. So I suppose if you measure physical quantity, it always has a unit when you measure it. The mole is the SI base unit of an amount of substance. The mole is the amount of substance which contains as many elementary ent entities, for example molecules, as there are atoms in 0.012 kilograms of carbon-12. This number is called the Avogadro constant. Now, if you look that up in your um, your data sheet, it's, it's given 6.02 by 10 to the 23. So that's how many molecules you would get or moles or atoms you would get in carbon-12, 12, 12 grams of carbon-12. So the mass of one mole of nitrogen molecules is 28 by 10 to the minus 3 kilograms, which is 28 grams. Calculate the number of molecules in 84 grams of nitrogen. So if we write down that 28 grams has got 6.02 by 10 to the 23 molecules. Then the question is asking you, how much will you find in 84 grams? And of course, 84 is 3 times 28. If you divide that, um, divide 84 by 28, you get 3. So what you're looking for here then, the number of molecules is equal to 6.02 by 10 to the 23. Sorry, that's, that isn't moles there. That's the number of molecules I should have written molecules and then you're multiplying this by 3 and you get um, 18.06 by 10 to the 23 3 times 6.02 and that's 1.806 by 10 to the 24 so that's how many molecules you would find in 84 grams of nitrogen the second part of the question here we are back to the quantities. Um, this time they're asking them, are they scalars or vectors? And so all you have to do is place a tick in the right place. So mass is a scalar. Kinetic energy is also a scalar. Momentum is a vector because it's momentum time velocity. And displacement is also a vector. Part C. Figure 1.1 shows two vectors, A and B. By drawing on figure 1.1, construct the vector A minus B. Now, there's B, but minus B is the, exactly same, the exact same vector, but in the opposite direction. And so therefore, what you have to put on here is a vector which is parallel to this. I'm going to draw it freehand here. I know I shouldn't really, but... Um, so there's your minus b, and then the vector which is a minus b is a plus minus b here. And therefore you want to draw a resultant vector, which is from here to here. Again, I should have used a rule. And there it is there, a minus b. That's your resultant vector of those two.